<laughs> Happy holidays and a Merry Christmas from Revenge of the 90s Kids. I thought I'd give a little special gift to you all and do a video about one of my favorite franchises in all of gaming history. That's right, Mario Party. In addition, I'll be doing my very first tier list video. To quick sum up what a tier list is, for those that don't know, I will be dragging and dropping all these games in order from newest release to last in these categories, S being the god tier per se, the best, all the way down to F being failure or just awful. Make sense? All right. Without further ado, let's get started. And I will start with the latest release, which is Super Mario Superstars. I was very happy once I got this as a gift. I have been playing it nonstop. Nothing too spectacular about it besides a couple main points. One, it pays tribute to a lot of the originals by bringing back old maps and minigames. And in some cases, polishes it and makes it very nice and look a lot better. Two, I can play this online from the comfort of my home against my buddies and kick better asses with my feet up drinking tea. With all that, I will only put it on the B tier and the reason I put it on the B tier is it still has lackluster maps, lackluster characters, and some of the map and some of the mini games they brought back, they changed too much and actually made it worse. That brings us to the first Mario Party to be released on the Switch. All I can really say about this game is just dull. Limited characters, the mini games are okay. It's similar to Mario Party 8 in terms of it's trying to show the new capabilities with the new game system, but there's nothing that really awes you about this game. So for now, I will put it on the D tier. These are subject to change. As we go down this list, I may switch some things around. In addition, if there is two on B, for instance, the one closest to B would get the upper edge to ones further down the line. I forgot to mention that as well. It's my first tier list, so but let's keep it going. The next two will be very easy. Let's just go ahead and put them there right now. Nine and ten are awful. They're not like any other Mario Party. They tried to change it up and they made some of the worst god awful mother. Next you have Mario Party 8. That's the first released Mario Party for the Nintendo Wii. Downside is, is they really tried to push the Wii remote system and how you would use it in a Mario Party and it wasn't that great. In fact, some of the mini games were very mundane. Just twist your controller and shake it and it didn't create for that fun of a Mario Party. But it's not nearly, nearly as bad as 10 and 9. And it's going to get that C tier for now because it's just got a little bit more to offer than Super Mario Party. Next we have 7. This is the last release for the GameCube. What separates Mario Party 7 from the rest of the series is that it is more like a board game than any other one of the Mario Parties. And you may ask, well Kyle, isn't it kind of a board game in general? Yes, but what I mean is, for example, you get orbs starting in Mario Party 5. The difference is, in Mario Party 7, it's like a game of Monopoly. So if you use those orbs on spaces that players can land on, they may have to give you coins, items, or even stars. So the more area that you cover, the more money that's going your way. It was a very unique system along with 
some very solid gameplay and probably the most polished in the GameCube series. So for now, we're gonna go ahead and put it in the B tier. Six is not much different. The claim to fame for Mario Party 6 is that there's a night and day mode and some pretty unique maps. This is true, but the night and day mode originally started in Mario Party 2. So I don't know where they got that. Nonetheless, great mini games as well. It would be hard to put it anywhere else but the B tier along with Mario Party 7. The only switch is that we're going to go ahead and put it in front of Mario Party 7. I think it's slightly better. And again, I think the online capabilities makes Superstar still the top of that B tier. Okay, next we have Mario Party 5. This is by far the weirdest Mario Party in this series, and that's not a bad thing. So obviously with Mario Party, you got the main course, right? So you have a party of up to four players, or maybe some AI, 20, 30 turns, what have you. Move throughout the board, accumulate as many stars and coins as you possibly can, and win it. Well, Mario Party 5, there's other options. There's vehicle battle mini games, each volleyball, hockey. There's other things you can do outside of that trajectory. There are so many things outside of that main course that can appeal to a wider variety of people. And I think that's what makes Mario Party 5 so unique. And as a result, I'm going to go ahead and put it all the way up on tier A. Now I know there's a lot of people that don't like Mario Party 5. Thank you. Ah, our first death threat. But I have spent my fair share doing every little aspect of this game to have a true fun appreciation for it. With that being said, it is no competition to its predecessor, Mario Party 4. I won't bore you and overindulge you in everything great about Mario Party 4. But I think what makes a Mario Party great when it comes down to the boards, the mini games, how you accumulate items, interact with the board. I mean, there's just so much to be said about how this game is great. Best 2v2s, 1v3s are even better than Mario Party 5. In my opinion, it is the best Mario Party in the series. These are the original three to come out for the Nintendo 64. Mario Party 3 being the most unique, it finally introduced Waluigi. It also had very intriguing mini games that forced you to stay engaged. There would be mini games that took into account, if you can recall, how many coins you had, how many mini games you had, many, what items did your opponents have. And I found that very unique, very interesting. However, the mini games were not that great. The boards were good, but it's a solid top tier C. Next, you have Mario Party 2. Mario Party 2 has some of the best mini games in the series. Its 1v3s are so famous that they've made their way to newer Mario Parties. The maps have made their way to new Mario Parties. And one little cute thing that has made this game different than any of the others. If you're playing in space, you're wearing a space suit. If you're out west, you're wearing a cowboy suit. And they didn't do that for any other Mario Party, and I wish they did. It's just something little that they added that really added to the experience. And as a result, I'm going to put it all the way up on the A tier. In fact, we're going to put it in front of Mario Party 5. Last, you have Mario Party 1. I mean, it had to all start somewhere, right? But there was a lot of rough edges that they needed to smooth out. For one, some of the mini games, there wasn't a clear winner. And when you first played this game, you weren't entirely sure what the goal was. Luckily, Mario Party 2 took some of the good mini games from this game and made them better. So as a result, it's going to be down here on D. So that is it. That is my very first tier list. Please comment below what your list might be. 
maybe your top three or your least favorite or just let me know what you think about my tier list do you agree disagree please remember to like subscribe and please share to anyone else that loves mario party i hope that you have a wonderful christmas and holidays i'll see you around hey kyle what are you doing oh hey baby uh just playing some games right now are you playing mario party by yourself yeah i'm uh capturing footage ah uh... Well, good job. Looks like you won. Is this for your tier ranking video that you're doing? Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, no, that's exactly what it's for. Okay, nice. Yeah, no. What's this? 